Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So for today's video, I recently just posted a video talking about Huda Beauty's chameleon obsessions. Well, I did buy both the jaguar and the tiger obsessions. I did not buy the python one. So today we're going to go over the... I think we'll go over the tiger obsessions today just because that one is kind of the one that really made me want to buy the collection. And I know what you guys are probably thinking is like, why did you buy it? It's so neutral. Well, it's because... <laughs> It's because my cat Matcha, she has a cat harness and a leash that is tiger print and we call her our little tiger because she has the little mackerel tabby stripes that make her look all tigery and she's just such a gremlin and she's so cute whenever she's acting really funny i'll call her like my little tiger cha or like my little devil cha so when i saw the tiger print of the tiger palette it just reminded me of her it made me feel so warm and fuzzy and you guys know i'm such a sucker for anything cat themed it's warm but at the same time this is still so pretty and so i really wanted to use it today so we're gonna do that and yeah, it's just gonna be a casual makeup video. It is about 3.15, 3.30 in the afternoon, so I am gonna go ahead and use a hydrating primer. I have been really liking this primer ever since I got it from the 21 Days of Beauty, which my 21 Days review is coming. I am still in the process of just thoroughly using everything that I got, but this definitely, spoiler, is gonna be a huge yes from me. It is so nice and I'm so glad that I bought it. This was definitely kind of an impulse buy not one i regret at all this is totally one i could see myself using pretty much every day during the winter it's not like the pat mcgrath one at all this one i don't really feel like covers my pores or anything it just is hydration and a little bit of brightening now i've been really into having a more matte full coverage base recently just kind of enjoy it before it becomes winter and i'm basically forced to use hydrating foundations again so i've been really enjoying using my Giorgio armani foundations now unfortunately i can't return because they only accept returns if you use the return slip that it was enclosed with and I have long since lost that so I can't return either of the two foundations I got and these both are too dark for me but I'm mixing a vision cream cover from Vanessa Myricks and I'm mixing it with these to see if it can lighten the foundation without altering the foundation to formula too much. This is just a sample. She sells samples on her website so you don't have to buy the whole thing and then be betrayed when it's not your shade which I think is wonderful. So my only issue is that for me to get the shade to lighten I have to put quite a bit of the vision cream cover in to really change the color and i'm afraid that putting this much in i'm altering the formula so that's kind of my only concern but i got the vision cream cover in the shade n1 so it's much pinker so definitely i couldn't use it by itself but you can see when i mix it in with the power fabric foundation oh i accidentally smudged a bunch under my eye So I think the biggest thing I've noticed when I mix in the Danessa Myricks is that it does make the foundation a lot thicker. I think I added a little bit too much of the Danessa Myricks today. I kind of like lost count and went a little bit crazy because it's a little bit pink so I'm looking a little bit gray. That's okay, we'll fix it with some bronzer and it'll be fine. So oops on my part, but yeah, I'm testing that out so far. Um, It's a, it's a pretty small sample, so... All right, so I'm gonna put on my concealer. I'm just using the same. I always use this concealer. It's no surprise there. You can see that covers a significant portion of my under eye bags, which is nice. I recently watched a Dear Peachy video on concealing. One of the tutorials they featured was showing how to cover dark circles. And one of the things that was mentioned in that tutorial was like, have you ever tried to cover your dark circles only to look down and still see the groove? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that is basically my suffering problem like every single day, which is why I don't use liquid concealers like basically ever. Well, supposedly this tutorial says that they, after putting on her concealer in the specific spots she looks down and you can still see obviously the grooves and what they what she said was she actually takes a matte highlighter and she stamps it right in that groove i was like well hmm because i didn't really have that so i'm in the process of trying to find one i think i found one from flower nose but i'm gonna have to like obviously pay for it to get over here but in the meantime i was like wait i remember you know i have the jacqueline um eye palette which is right here and this is similar enough so i'm gonna use this pink shade here i'm gonna kind of mix these two and i'm gonna use 
use this and I'm gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna use a tiny brush and stamp it right where my groove is in accordance with what that tutorial said. Now I can see why she would prefer to use a contouring powder because that's not really gonna set your makeup. So if you have dry skin like I do, it won't dry out your skin. Um, this particular powder palette, it's not something I can use during the winter. I really can only use this during the summer. So I've done this eye and if you look down, it's not like the miracle that she was making it out to be on that video. Interesting. I think it'll look better once I can use that matte white highlighter because these powders are still pretty close to my skin tone. So it's not really giving a super dramatic highlighting effect. And so now if I look down, it is actually pretty well covered. And from the from this angle, of course, not a bad trick. I'm going to continue playing around with that. I'm going to set my face with my the Alba Spray. The Power Fabric Foundation, especially mixed with the Vanessa Myricks, I don't really, I think it more or less is gonna set itself. I'm gonna use like very little powder on my face. If I use powder, I feel like it's going to make me really, really dry. So we're just gonna use the setting spray and leave it be. If I think I need setting powder later, I'll use it. But for now, I'm not gonna use powder beyond what I put underneath my eyes. Um, this is definitely a very matte foundation so so during the labor day sale from sephora i bought a new brow blade because my blackout pencil is completely panned and cool cookie as well on its way and i felt like the cool cookie pen side is not super usable for me some days it's like really great and other days it barely shows up so i got it in dark drapes during the sale it was half off and i was wondering if this might this might work because the blackout pen is just it really is so easy for me to just look like i drew sharpie on my eyebrows so i'm gonna try this and we're gonna see what happens. My concern with this was that it was going to be a super warm brown because that's how most browns tend to go is they're really really warm for if you are truly a true brunette. Oops. I'm not in it today. I feel like this is going to be a really bad makeup day today. I'm getting those vibes. It's not bad. It is a, definitely a little bit warmer than what I usually use but I think I can get away with it. I keep <laughs> I keep doing this to myself. Yeah I don't I think this color is pretty good. You guys know I always draw my brows out pretty long. We'll see what the pen side holds of course. Hmm. I would say it's almost too warm, but you know, it's not something I can really necessarily get too fussy over. Uh, I think it is good. I kind of wish they that they had like lighter grays. I know that tends to be something mostly like it's like you find that in Korea. Yeah, this isn't bad. I actually, I think this is pretty good. Let me just blend it out a little bit. The only thing about brow blade is it has no spoolie. Okay, that's looking a lot better. So now I'm gonna take the pen side and I'm gonna see how the pen side does. I'm really excited actually. I like this pen side a lot for sure. Okay, I do think this is a pretty good color. The fall haul is currently going on in Ulta while I'm filming this. I have my cart. I'm debating, very heavily debating, but um, one of the things that I really wanted to get was the NYX brow pen. I just don't have a second thing I want, so it wouldn't really, I wouldn't really be getting a sale out of it. But um, that is one thing that I do want is that brow pen from NYX because Angie over on her channel was raving about it. I also do really want to try the ABH brow pen. I do need to just tidy up the bottom of this eyebrow just a little bit. I think I messed it up even more. Whatever. Not gonna be the best makeup day that I've ever had, but that's fine. Okay, the brows are on. Um, the sun is like, the window's like right here, so excuse the lighting. I'll move closer now. Uh, so it looks fine, all things considered. So this video has gone on for long enough. I'm going to now move on to the eyes. I am going to be using the Revolution Prime and Lock. I think I like this. I'm not so sure yet, but so far I have no reason to dislike it. Um, you'll see in one of my upcoming videos where I used an eyeshadow palette without any primer and one of the shimmers patching off and I think it's because I didn't have any primer on. So I'm trying to get back into the habit of using primer more often and at the very least this doesn't dry out my eyelids. Now I know when some people use this they really pile it on until it basically has concealed their natural eyelid color and texture. As you can see I use so little that it does not have that effect. I'm mostly using it as an eye primer. All right, so here again is Tiger Obsessions. It is so adorable. I love it. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and take this shade right here, and this is just going to be my base shade. It is 
pretty close to the natural color of my eyelid. My eyelids have a little bit of natural hyperpigmentation on them, so my eyelids are going to be a bit darker than the rest of my face, which I don't really care about. So I'm going to kind of let this shade set my eye base while also offering a little bit of color. And you can see it adds just a little bit of yellowness and warmth to my eyelids, so it's kind of setting up what the rest of the look is going to look like, which is going to be very warm. I'm so excited. I literally can count on one hand the number of palettes I have from her just because budget and everything. On my wish list from her is all of the nude obsessions, all of the brown obsessions, and like one or two from the haze obsessions. I just want to have all of her obsessions palettes. I think they're so cute and I'm always wondering what she's gonna do next. I wonder if maybe like one of these days she'll do like a fruit obsessions. That would be really cute. Apologies for my past videos having such wonky lighting. I'm still fighting with my white balance. I feel like I can never get it right. So I know my videos sometimes look weird or blown out or like I put a filter on. I do not use filters, but I can see how my very bad camera skills can make it look like I put a filter on because like they're not in focus so my skin looks blurred. I promise I'm not using filters. I'm just very amateurish at all of this. All right, I'm just going to blend all of this out. I'm just using a brush from the ABH palette. I think it's from the Sultry palette. I just like pulled the brush out and for some reason I'm using it again. I used to think it was a really bad brush, but I think over time as it's been washed, it's actually kind of softened up significantly. Now it feels really soft. Okay, so that is the base color applied all over. I think it is really cute, so we're gonna move on. Um, I'm thinking it would be really fun to go yellow today, so we're gonna go with this. And I'm gonna stamp this mostly on the inner half really brighten up this portion. It's not as yellow as the yellow in Python. It's more of like a neutral kind of yellow, which I personally prefer. I know yellows can be really hard to do well. I'd say this yellow is okay, but you can see it adds a nice amount of brightness to my eyelid and it looks really nice. So all of this to say that the yellow is fine. It's not like a super opaque pigmented yellow that immediately pops off the page, but I personally don't really care if my yellows do that or not. And I know with her Obsessions palettes, her mattes can sometimes be hit or miss for some people, so. And with my eyelids, you really can never tell if it's my eyelids messing things up either. Okay, so actually from far away, you can definitely see the brightness the yellow offers and it's actually really super nice. I actually think I will use this dark brown because I thought wouldn't it be really cool if it was a yellow and brown look? So I'm gonna use this. And I'm using the fluffy side to start building it up. I'm actually gonna switch to a different brush. I think I need a better shape. I'm gonna be switching to one of my flatter brushes, which um, if my refer video is gonna go up soon and you'll hear there why I like this shape of brush better. And now it's behaving a lot better. And I'm just gonna build this up. I have some leftover lash glue right here. So if you see a little bit of the eyeshadow kind of grabbing, that would be, it's just grabbing onto lash glue I didn't fully take off because I'm gross. And I'm not getting much fallout at all, so. So far, I'm liking this. Aside from the part where my lash glue is ruining my plans, but. All right, so I'm kind of laid down the general area that I want it to be in, and I'm gonna kind of pull it in a little bit closer. I'm gonna kind of just start bringing it in. So the middle blend is looking pretty good. So we're gonna focus on that outer corner. And so for that, I'm changing to an even smaller brush and that way I can really start kind of working the eyeshadow in and also blend very carefully and precisely. So I'm stamping it now and now I'm just gonna work on it very slowly. So yeah, it blends out really well, honestly. I have no complaints there. It looks like that so far. And I'm also gonna take the excess and run it across my lower lash line and just leave the outer, just on the outer part like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back into a fluffier brush so I can really just kind of blend it all together. And I'm gonna tap more into the yellow. So the um, outer edge is definitely a little more clean than I would have wanted. I definitely struggle with getting the edges of my eyeshadow to behave how I want. Definitely something I've struggled with for years at this point and I'll just, you know, continue to improve. So in the meantime, not what I wanted, but I'll leave it. I'm not gonna try and change it. So now we'll just work on the other side. Now I'm just gonna start stamping and blending. I accidentally smudged a little bit down here and I brought it a bit low. So now I am gonna take some powder foundation and I'm gonna clean this up. This did get pretty messy. I'm just using the Urban Decay powder foundation. 
and that just kind of cleans up the edges a little bit i think anyways yeah today's not going super well okay so i've laid down those two mats and honestly can all things considered looking not bad so i'm now gonna start laying down those shimmers and the gold seems a little bit predictable so i actually i wonder what would happen if i layered this these little scaled shades she's saying are like her newest kind of formula uh the one in the chameleon one i thought was really pretty but a little bit subtle this one is showing up on my finger with this amazing yellow pink kind of shift and it's showing up a lot better on my finger than the other one did so i'm gonna use this today so it is again it has more of a translucent base you know how i am with these kinds of shades i do honestly love translucent shades like these um i am the kind of person who will shear out a pat mcgrath <laughs> metallic so that I can get those. That should sit, tell you all you need to know about me. So I actually really like these kinds of shades. And putting it on, I'm getting a really pretty effect. I don't know if it necessarily matches the yellow and brown because predominantly on my lid, you can see the pink. Here's what the shade looks like. So you can see, if I turn it enough, you can see the gold. I don't know if I would consider this like the best shade for the look, but my curiosity is satisfied. I personally so far have really enjoyed these little scaled shades. Shades. I always love that she's experimenting with different textures and finishes of her eyeshadows, even if not all of them are the greatest ideas she's ever had. I love that she's willing to at least try. So I personally think this is really pretty. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put something on the inner corner. So I am going to use that gold I was talking about earlier, and I'm just going to pop this on the inner corner. I'm not really using this as like an inner corner highlight or anything trying out this new brush to see if it works. So far though, I don't think it is. This brush is definitely not helping, so I'm gonna use a different brush. As mentioned before, I can never get metallics to show up super well on a brush. I can't tell yet if it's a me problem or not, but yeah, just FYI. So that is actually super, super pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other eye. I know I could like dampen my brush or something, but I always forget to and I just get so lazy, so I just don't. So that's what the eyes are looking like now, actually really liking it. Really cool looking actually. So I'm going to take that gold shade and I'm going to use it on my lower lash line. Okay, yeah, definitely these metallics are fine. I'm using a different brush and this brush likes this likes these metallics a lot more. A little bit of fallout, but I'm not really ever super surprised by fallout from metallics at this point. I mean, <laughs> it's metallics, what do you expect? Yeah, so I, I got pretty significant amount of fallout, but it's okay. This brush I used to apply blush and I just got blush on the inner corner of my face because of course I did. So now it looks like I got burned right here. Let me just see if I can cover that up. We'll just ignore that. I didn't realize. I'm gonna put this in the wash pile. Yeah, the omens were right. This was not a good makeup day. Okay, so I'm gonna probably leave the eyes pretty much like this. I think the lower lash line could use a little bit of a touch up. Let me find the brush for it. I'm gonna go in with that dark, br dark brown and we're just gonna touch up the lower lash line. I'm just gonna really make sure it's pushed up against my lashes. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner, right? I'm gonna add some inner corner highlight. Now that palette, I wouldn't say had an inner corner highlight, so I'm just gonna use something in my own collection, which I never, which I don't ever mind doing. So today I felt like using my loose highlighter from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I haven't used this in a while, so and we're just gonna put this on the inner corner. And it is so bright and beautiful. I love it, so. And I really don't even have to shake any product out into the jar like at all, like just pulling off of what is left from the last time I used it. You can see I get such a bright and beautiful effect. So let's work on the lashes. So I'm just gonna be curling my lashes, applying just enough mascara that my lashes will not be dropping, and then we're gonna put on false lashes. So I'm just using a refer lash curler, and I don't necessarily need my lashes to look perfect, but I still need them to 
stand up and not so that I don't have like a visible double row of lashes. This is why I need to go back and get a lash lift. And when you have a bunch of metallics on your eyelid, you always want to make sure you clean your curler. Okay, I'm just using the Maybelline Full and Soft Waterproof because it sucks. And so I literally at this point just use it to kind of keep my lashes blending into falsies. Despite being waterproof, it also comes off as easily as non-waterproof, so that's what I use this for. I find it really does not make my lashes look any different at all. It is an extremely boring and underwhelming mascara. This, the name had me so hopeful, but it is not it. I'm going to be using Doe Morning Dew. Just bought a whole bunch of lashes from them. I love their lashes so much, so I can just pop these on now. Getting the epicanthic fold area is always the hardest part. Sometimes you get it and other times you don't. All right, let's see if this goes any better. Okay, I think that this eye is on a little bit better than the other eye today, which is fine. That happens all the time to me. I definitely want to try those magnetic lashes someday. Glamnetic ones, I do want to try them. I just haven't, they're expensive. That's what that's looking like. So let me go ahead and put lashes. I curled my lower lashes already. So I'm going to use my lash idol and we're going to put that on the lower lash line. And I was looking down because um, Miso is asleep on my foot. <laughs> I have such lazy coworkers. So that's one coat, so I'm going to put on some more. I feel like this is a two coat mascara for sure. Once I get the second coat on, my lower lashes suddenly look like tons better. So that's what they're looking like right now. Considering my lashes, this is honestly pretty good, right? Okay, so I think the last thing that this look needs is going to be something in my lower waterline, but only in the outer part. So I'm going to do that. One of the things I bought during 21 Days of Beauty was probably too many shades of the Killer Liner. This is Killer Storm, and it's a very unusual shade of gray that I hadn't seen before. And I think this will match the look perfectly. So I'm just going to put this on my waterline and I'm only doing it on the inner part or the outer part of my waterline. Like right there. It, it's very subtle so I'm going to use a blush that kind of reflects that. Anything like too pink or orange is definitely going to look really strange and this is not really quite the look that you'd want to wear a yellow blush with either. So we're going to go with kind of a brownier blush is what I'm thinking. I'm going to use M Cosmetics Faded Clementine. I do not have it in the orange packaging. I wish I did but I think this will actually be a great shade. I know some people even use this as a bronzer and I'm going to kind of apply this as if I was putting it on like a bronzer it's a little bit more orange on your cheek than it looks in the pan, but at the same time, it's still very flattering. And it's kind of that baked formula, so it's not completely matte. I love her powder blush formula. I do really want to pick up that Venetian Rose one. It's just not been in the budget yet. And I do want to try her sticks, but again, I just waiting until I have the budget to make a bulk order from M Cosmetics, either that or maybe if she like has like a 20% off sale or something. I know she doesn't do sales often, so we'll see. Okay, so I'm looking a little sunburned and that's fine. That will be the blush. I think honestly it looks like, I think it, it's like a little bit too orange, but at the same time, I think it looked fine. So I do think a little bit of bronzer would help. I'm going to be using the powder bronzer from the Patrick Ta Bronzer and Contour Duo. I don't actually use the contour very often just because I forget to, but I do really like the br bronzer color. It's light enough that it when I use it, it doesn't really darken my skin or make me look tan it just changes my undertone like that's literally all it does is it's going to alter my undertone slightly so in a situation like this where my foundation was not the right undertone it totally can come in clutch and i just can use it on the borders of my face to kind of make my skin look a little bit less ashy and you can see how I was able to, particularly around here, you can see the undertones being corrected. I'm gonna take a little under my nose. Now for highlighter, I am currently testing out the Nabla Skin Glazing in Ozone. This is a baked formula, so it picks up pretty nicely and it's difficult to pick up too much. And so if you're using a brush as fluffy as this one, you can really tone it down. I got another shade too, but that one is mostly meant to be a blush topper, so I'm not using it today. 
and a little bit on the tip, just a little bit. I'm sorry that this video is long. I'll try and edit it down as best I can, but it might be another like 28, 29 minute video. I can't ever seem to get them shorter. So this is what it's looking like so far, really nice. So all that's left to do is to work on the lips. This is the M Cosmetics True Gloss in Caramel Glaze. I don't use this often at all because look at this shade, but I think this might actually work really well. This is gonna be the ColourPop Lippy Sticks in another round. I've actually been preferring this lately because I it's pinkier. So I feel like it's closer to my actual lip color. So I don't know, I've been using this one more often lately. I do like the M Cosmetics one, especially because it is retractable. You kinda can see what I'm talking about maybe. I don't know. I just feel like it's a little bit darker but at the same time the undertones match better you know what i mean okay so now we're gonna pop this on this is really brown i think you can tell why i don't wear this often i don't remember why i even bought this color i don't know why i picked this color i mean i guess i'm glad i'm glad i have it like right now but i literally have only used this shade like twice i'm still trying to figure out why i bought this the formula is fine m cosmetics is gloss formula is fine okay i'm gonna spray my face one more time just to really lock that in make my skin look perfect I love that setting spray so much. Stylevana had it on sale, so I did end up getting a backup of it just because whenever I have products I really like that I'm sourcing from Asia, I never know when it'll become impossible for me to find. I'm very glad that I did. I like totally need to work on my background, but if you'll excuse me. So this is the final look. Really pretty. I actually love the middle shade in the palette. I think these are so cool. Here's the other one that I got, which is Jaguar. I'll use this one in a future video. And this is really pretty too, so I'm looking forward to using this. I actually really like it. Uh, I was kind of nervous when I was first working on it, but it's actually quite nice. I do feel like I could have built up the brown a bit more, but you guys know I kind of just chicken out when it comes to getting those shades really deep. And I it's hard with my dry eyes to get the eyeshadows to stick well as well so love how this looks i think it did come together the blush was almost too orange but then this color lip did really fight with that orange to tone it down so overall looking fine um, my foundation shade was almost tragic but with the bronzer and everything on it looks fine so I'll see you guys in the next video. I have a ton of uploads coming this week. You'll have seen my vlog yesterday. This is going up Tuesday. I have a bunch of really fun stuff because I've been playing catch up and so I'm just rapid firing getting these videos up so that I can catch up with myself basically. I have a lot of holiday stuff I'm looking forward to and I have a lot of things, just lots of stuff coming. So my upload frequency I'm hoping can increase for the holiday season and I hope you guys are looking forward to all of it. As always, please let me know if you have any requests. I'll do my best. And in the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!